Hello everyone, welcome back to the basics of strength training. This is episode number two, um, where my goal is to pass on some tips and tricks that I have learned in my nearly decade of powerlifting on to um, you all, and hopefully you find some work. So today we're looking at the bench press grip width for powerlifting, and we're going to take a look at the physics and the me mechanics behind different grip widths and find what's optimal for you. Okay, so when thinking about the idea of a bench press grip width, first thing we have to figure out is, A, what's our goal, right? As power lifters, our goal is normally to move as much weight as possible, but if you're a bodybuilder or even a strongman bench pressing, you might have different goals, to get stronger triceps, to get stronger shoulders, etc. So you can vary this grip width in order to accomplish those various goals. In today's example, we're going to go over the most efficient way to bench press to move the most weight in powerlifting. So here I've got some diagrams drawn up, right? And we have to start simple. So looking here, this kind of represents the bar. And on either side of the bar, you're going to have these power rings so to speak. And from here on, whenever I say the rings on the bar, these are the ones that I'm talking about uh, in relation to placing your fingers. So in powerlifting, the widest grip that you can take is to put your pointer finger on these power rings. Now, just because that's the widest grip you can take, that doesn't mean that it's the optimal grip for you and your leverages. Now, I know personally, I started more narrow. A lot of people do that coming up through high school, and that's perfectly fine. But what we find as you get stronger and progress, that narrow grip, maybe pinkies on the power rings, or even within that, might not be optimal for power transfer. So we want to work that out. So now that we've established what we're talking about with the bar, we're going to take a look at some images. And my goal for this episode is to teach you how to find your best width by looking at your own leverages, because everyone's going to have different, you know, arm lengths and chest widths and arches in their bench press. And that's going to change what's optimal for you. So the entire goal here for the physics behind a bench press is going to be to get our levers lined up. So if we start with this one here, this is going to be our most efficient transfer. I've got uh, the lifter's arm outstretched at the beginning of the lift. Notice I gave them a slight arch, nothing too drastic. And as they bring that weight down, it will touch your chest and ideally, we will have your elbow directly under your wrists when you touch on the bench press, right? That way, whenever you push up, you keep your elbows under your wrist and you have the most optimal transfer of power. And usually the case is you're going to push it back over your face for a lockout. So the first thing you can look for that is a good sign that you're at an efficient grip width is hey, is my elbow under my wrist and under the bar, all in line. Now, if we take a look at these two examples, right, this lifter is touching his or her chest further up, and the elbow is not directly in line with the bar, as we can see with this. Um, I kind of grabbed a ruler so that we can see it, not in line. Right, look at this lifter, they are lined up, so that is optimal. Same thing over here, except the opposite. They touch lower and they are still out of alignment with that elbow, so they're not going to have optimal power transfer and therefore probably not lift as much weight. So, when you're trying to find your bench width. The best way to do it is through some trial and error and find where you need your finger on the rings in order to get these joints lined up, right? 
And that's our goal. Now, there's a second side to it because I kind of drew this top down view of the lifter here. Notice optimal positioning because you cannot see their elbow. It's directly under their wrists and the bar. Now they do have an angle here from their shoulder and their upper arm. And that angle, angle can vary, right? If you have a very wide grip width, then this angle might be more obtuse. Whereas if you have a narrow grip width, that might bring your arm down and cause you to tuck your elbows more. So that is another thing to consider when you're playing with your grip width. So those are the mechanics that I consider when I'm thinking of my grip width. Now, there is this anecdotal side of things where you just need to play around with where your fingers are to find that optimal space. Obviously, the wider your grip is, the less range of motion you have to go through, and the more narrow you are, the farther range of motion you have to go through. But you may be compromising this mechanical advantage in some of those grips. So I'm sorry to disappoint that there's no clear-cut answer as far as a bench press grip. Um, overall, the wider your shoulders are, the wider your grip can probably be to stay within these parameters. Um, but that is not a hard, fast rule. So play around with it. Give yourself plenty of time to adjust to the loads. I suggest at least six weeks to get used to a grip with before you say it was a success or not. But hopefully that answers some questions. If you have any more, leave them down below. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.